just to make it a little bit more thorough, let's try it too. So now here with one as my control, two and five are gonna be reciprocal. So when I multiply by two, I should get the same thing I get when I divide by five, okay? Just like doubling and halving, um, even though they're a little bit different. So uh, let's see, two multiplications go two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine. So dividing by five, I have one divided by five is 0.2, which is two. Two divided by five is 0.4, which is four. Three divided by five is 0.6, which is eight. Four divided by five is 0.8, which is eight. Five divided by five is one, of course, which is one. Six divided by five is 1.2, which equals three. Seven divided by five, you can see here, is 1.4, which equals five. Eight divided by five, 1.6, which equals seven. Nine divided by five is 1.8, which equals nine, okay? So in other words, just like I have multiples of two, two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine, dividing by five gives me the same thing. Two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine. All right, I hope that's clear. Let me try just another example. Well, let's try multiplying by five then. The same thing should work. When I multiply by five, I get five. Let me put my other poster up here. This will make it a little easier to see the sequence that way. I don't have to be too, too confusing. Uh, multiplying by five, I got five, 10, or I guess it's five, one, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine. I'm gonna assume everyone's following me with the reducing to single digits now. I think we've covered that pretty well. So then dividing by, uh, let's see, dividing by two should be multiples of five. Very easy to get tricked up, slipped up here, but let's see. 2, 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, which gives me 5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Uh, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, which equals 6. 4 divided by 2 is, of course, 2. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, which equals 7. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5, which is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, which equals 9. So in other words, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 5. You're going to find the same thing with 4 and 7. I won't continue to do all these for you. You can do them for yourself. But multiplying by 4, you're going to get the same as you get when you divide by 7. Dividing by 7 has actually been one of those riddles of math. You can actually solve it with this and show it to be perfect, but I'm not going to go into that here on this video. Okay, but you can work that for yourself out. Multiplying and dividing is the same uh, given reciprocals. So that's why I was explaining in the beginning reciprocal motion. But let's go back to my 3, 9, and 6. Now I said um, when, my, when my number 9, no matter what you multiply it by, it's always the same, the never-changing number 9 in terms of its multiplying function. But when you divide nine by nine, something interesting happens. Um, so let's try that. Nine divided by one is nine. So we still have our nine. Nine uh, divided by two is 4.5, which equals nine. So we still have nine. But then something interesting happens. When I divide nine by three, I get three. So there we actually do see a function which changes the number nine. So the first number we have is a three. Nine divided by four, I believe is five point, let me, let me just double check my math so I'm not giving wrong numbers. Nine divided by four, oh, I didn't write them down. I believe it's 5.4. Anyway, it equals back to 9. What is it? It'd be 4.5. 4.5, yeah. 9 divided by 4. 
would be no it would be two two point two five two point two five is what it is yeah which would equal nine nine divided by five comes back to equal nine then again when you divide nine by six something interesting happens you get six okay so now we've had a three and a six showing how it is that the nine is initially dividing into these polar forces which we see as magnetism. And remember again when I said when this higher world of the nine, three, and six is dividing, you get multiplication in the physical world. A very interesting concept which has not been pointed out here before. Okay, nine divided by seven comes back to nine, nine divided by eight comes back to nine, and nine divided by nine, and here's the magic trick, gives you one. So the only numbers that seem to have this ability to cross between one world and the other are what? Nine, three, six, and one. Okay, this is why we say one God, one universe. In order for anything to be coherent, which is certainly a property we're looking for in energy and nature, coherence, communication, it has to be unified. One is the only number which can cross the boundary between this world and the higher world. It is certainly the only number which has the full capacity for channeling this energy of the nine, which is absolute wholeness, completeness, filled up to the top. That is the one. So I want you to pay attention to the fact too that there's a very specific relationship between how this three and six relate to the nine and how the two and five relate to the one or any reciprocals for that matter. The function of the nine splitting into the three and six is directly related to reciprocals in the physical world which are modeling motion. Okay, so we did multiplication, we did division. Add and subtract is pretty easy. If you're adding any number, you're just going up in increments of that number. If you're subtracting, you're going down in increments of that number, which is the same that I just showed in my, um, in my multiplication series. The only other thing I didn't show, uh, you know, and I showed reciprocals there. Now, I didn't talk about my three and six. What happens when you divide by three or six? Well something interesting happens and it leads me into my next topic here which is uh, something we call family number groups.